Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. It's Josh. And it's Mia. And today we're gonna to talk about property strategies. Now there's many strategies when investing in property, rent to rent, normal buy to let, uh, service accommodation. But today we're just gonna go over three of those which are on the board over there. Yeah. Uh, so moving forward, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button down below. Everything we're talking about today is gonna to be all in more detail in our ebook. So check that out below and click the link below to get yours today. So we hope you enjoy and thank you in advance. Okay guys, the first one's probably the simplest of buy to let. It's just a single let. So as a landlord, if you own a house or a flat, you rent it out in its entirety to just one family, one person or party. So mm -hmm. You've got a flat and one family are living in there. It's a single let. This is normally a starting point for a lot of landlords. It doesn't have to be. You could really start anywhere as long as you know what you're doing. But some landlords like to start here because it's a lot easier to learn how to manage tenants when you've just got one tenant rather than a lot. You know, normally single lets are kind of easier to source and have a few less regulations. And when you're trying to do bigger conversions or rentals so it's a really good starting point if you're trying to look into the industry and get a lot of practice so when you have a single let you're really looking for a minimum of seven percent yield and probably about 300 pound cash flow if you need to know more about how to figure that out we did a video yesterday all about equations so give that check it out to see how you'd work it out but yeah that would be your baseline so really if you're doing single let, don't bother with it if it's not bringing you back those sort of numbers. Exactly, well said. So um, one of the pros for doing a single let, guys, is that you can usually um, get that done unfurnished. Uh, so for the landlord, which is you, if you're watching, um, means that you get to save more money. Uh, you don't have to um, buy furniture for that property. Yeah. So that gives you some capital on the side for any other opportunities that might come across your way. And yeah, as Mia said as well, um, of course, this is a good, good starting point for a new investor, new to the game, doing a single let, building mm -hmm. that portfolio. And yeah, soon that will be um, like a regular habit when buying properties in your first early stages. Okay, guys, so the next strategy we're going to talk about is multi lets. Now, uh, multi-lets are usually, uh, what multi-let is, you can rent out the rooms individually and the tenants in that property will share a common area. So that could be the kitchen and the lounge, the bathrooms. Um, and usually the difference, just to make clear before we go on to our next one, which is HMOs, the difference between multi-lets and a HMO is the number of room and floors are in that property. Yep, so generally a rule of thumb you might hear around is, property could have up to four individually let rooms and two be over two floors mm. before becoming HMO. But I can't stress this enough. This really depends on where you're investing. Like, do yeah. not just waltz into an area and because we've told you this, be like, well, it's a multi-let, not a HMO. Because in Coventry, where we normally base our investments and our clients' investments, it's actually anything over two households is a HMO automatically. Mm. So really check the regulations with the local council to make sure you're adhering to the right guidelines to, for the type of property you are developing. Okay, guys. So, you know, one of the pros of this strategy is that you will not have to um, get an HMO license. So this can save time. And as well, you don't have to go through the headache of possibly being denied the HMO yeah. license. So doing that multi-let strategy can work in your favor in that way as well. And also there are legislations put in place in some areas uh, where HMOs um, doesn't really work too well for the council. So um, yeah, uh, multi-lets can actually cover that for you as a strategy. Okay guys, the next one of course is gonna be HMO. Much like the multi-let, it's basically you're just renting out the rooms on a singular basis, not mm -hmm. as the property as a whole. So the rule of thumb, as we kind of covered before, is anything more than three floors and more than five individually let rooms are considered a HMO pretty much. 
anywhere you go, if you have that, you're gonna be looking at renting out a HMO. But again, I can't stress this enough, as I said last time, please, please, please check your local council's regulations because you could get yourself in a lot of hot water, especially with HMOs, mm. if you're not adhering to the guidelines correctly. Yeah, so that's really important. And guys, this, uh, on the flip side, uh, turn to the pros. So one of the pros of a HMO is that it really maximizes your income. Remember that you're letting it out per room, uh, so that creates a good cash flow for you monthly. And as well, you know, another benefit um, is that because of the cash flow it's providing you, it does shadow some of the negatives that people may say come with a HMO, such as um, the difficulties and uh, inserting all the fire doors and meeting some uh, legislations in that HMO. Um, so because of this, this is a good pro for doing a HMO strategy. Okay guys, so the next one we're gonna talk about is SA, a service accommodation. Now usually this is gonna be advertised on sites such as booking.com and Airbnb. Yeah. And remember the way this strategy functions is short lets. Um, so moving on slightly, this will have to be a property that is fully furnished uh, having hotel like facilities Definitely. and yeah and, and the clients that are going to be um, mainly going on those websites to book that are going to be tourists um, but you will also have uh, people like builders that need to do a project uh, afar and that will need to bring all their colleagues um, in that area to do that project as well okay so a big pro of this is you're literally gonna maximize your profits so much more than probably any of the other strategies you've spoken about. Because obviously, like Josh said, tourists, if you're going on holiday, you're gonna be way willing to pay more for one week in that service accommodation than you would for one week in your home residential let. Yeah. So you could charge 500 quid for a week. If your service accommodation is fully occupied that whole month, that's 2,000 pounds for that one month. If you charge £2,000 for someone to rent your house on a residential basis, unless it's like a penthouse in London, <laughs> you're gonna be lucky to get that. So this is a really, really great strategy to really make a lot of money from your property. Exactly. So the last um, strategy we're gonna cover is commercial. Now, that's quite a generic way to brand it. Obviously, up until now, I've been talking about residential strategies. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to talk a little bit about commercial properties. So this could be anything such as an office, a shop, retail spaces, restaurants, bars, warehouses. You're kind of getting the picture. Basically, if it's not residential, it's probably going to be commercial. So this is a really great strategy to go into. It does offer a lot of financial rewards if you go into it properly, but it does come with a few more risks than you would find in a residential property, purely because most of the time the public are interacting with your property. So that brings a yeah. whole lo like load of safety regulations and hazards and sort of that sort of thing. But I really need to emphasize that you could have smashed the residential property market you can't waltz into the commercial property market thinking, well, I'm amazing at HMOs, this is gonna be a, you know, a breeze, because it's not. It's got a whole different market, loads of different regulations, it has different lease lengths, different lease option contracts, different hazards, all because it's interacting with the public so much. So this is a completely different sector. And before going into this, you will have to research commercial property specifically residential and commercial property you could be amazing at one and really fumble the other so make sure you know your stuff before going into it because it could be a very costly mistake true costly it can be well said but on the pros um the, you know the annual returns can usually be about six to twelve percent depending on the area so of course going from single lets to hmo service accommodation commercial can be extremely profitable yeah. um, especially in recent times with unfortunately the amount of um, retail shops that have closed um, there is a big opportunity now for once again the private sector to step up and as well guys you know um, it does also create a uh, good professional relationships um, it's b2b so business to business so this will help the whole process run smoothly as well for both you and the tenant of that commercial property. 
Yeah, definitely. So I just want to mention one thing we haven't spoken about here that is a key strategy to a lot of investors are flips. Now, we really could have involved that in this video, but we kind of wanted to wait, hold back and give it its own video because it is kind of a whole different ball game. You're going to have a lot more refurbishments, capital, so that sort of thing. So we're going to save that for its own video, but we are going to cover that a bit further down the line. But all of this we cover in a lot more detail in our ebook. We go through all the pros, all the cons, um, everything you're going to need to know in a bit more detail, obviously. Not that many people are going to want to sit through like a half an hour YouTube video of us yabbering on. But if you want to know more about those strategies, I would really recommend downloading our ebook because we really go into a lot of depth about it. So thank you guys for sticking with us this far. We really appreciate all the views, all the subscribers, all the likes. And thank you for watching. Exactly. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Share with your friends. And we thank you in advance again. And we hope to see you in the next video. Take care for now.